introductions in three parts. I was somewhat saddened when I received Philip's email last week reminding me that this poetry series has a fairly strict rule against introductions. Skip the introductions, Philip says, and take the full time to do your thing but introductions are my thing, so it occurred to me that I could write a poem called Introductions in order to properly contextualize my shit. And so, part two. Due to the length of this introduction, the remainder of my set will be about 12 minutes, in which I plan to do five works, coming to six works in total, because of course, this three-part piece that I am doing now counts two. The first one after this will be a seven-part part work called On Being in the New Yorker. It really needs no introduction, but here we are. So I will say that last year I had a little write-up in the New Yorker and it occurred to me it would be fun to write about it. The poem is in seven parts, so once it is done I will only have about eight minutes, so I will have to cut my set short and do only three more poems. I will do one from each of my three bands, starting with the most recent and most fucked up band, Sensation Play, which is a concept band centered around the topics of male submission and sex and sexuality. From that band I will do Because It Pleases You. That band, by the way, is performing at Little Skips in Bushwick on October 28th. Because my last two pieces, so my last two pieces are short, I will actually have a minute or two more than I thought I would. So I will read a couple of entries from my book Daily Negations, a self-help parody containing a negative thought for every day of the year. I will read today's entry and maybe the one from yesterday and the one from tomorrow, except I forgot the book at home, so maybe I'll just read some at random or maybe I won't at all. My band Unusual Squirrel has an album called Fuck Sandwich, which is, a, which is available at bandcamp.com, and from that album, I will perform Tits, which was written during a short subway ride and was inspired by an advertisement for breast augmentation surgery that I saw in the subway. After seeing the ad, I wanted to see if I could write something in the time it took me to go the six or seven stops on the Uptown One train, and I did, in fact, manage to do that. Finally, I will do something for my band King Missile. If I feel that A, you haven't heard enough fucked up shit, and B, there's enough time, I will do the miracle of childbirth. Otherwise, I will do socks, not both. King Missile is playing Union Hall Friday, October 13th. <laughs> but before I do that, I may decide there is time for one or two more, in which case I may also do an old poem called The President. This was written in the late 90s and was originally called The Mayor because it was originally about Giuliani, fucking piece of shit. After he left office, I realized that by changing a few words, it worked for the fucking piece of shit President Bush. I have not read this poem in over eight years, but I believe the time has come again, so maybe tonight. Or maybe I'll do uh, A Paler Shade or Invisible Dog. Part three. Robert Frost said writing free verse is like playing tennis with the net down. I do that a lot, although I like nets because I like to tear them down and then play tennis. So I thank Philip for setting up the net, and now that the introductions are complete, let's go. This is called On Being in the being in the New Yorker in seven parts, part one. I am in the New Yorker this week, a little profile about my history with my band, King Missile. And although I am a grown man, 55 years old, as sadly the profile points out, I find myself on the subway looking around to see if anyone's reading it, to see if anybody is noticing me and thinking, hey, there's that guy who's in the goings-on about town section. A grown man, I guess, but still a child. Part two. Somehow I managed not to tell the woman carrying the Strand bookstore bag with the New Yorker magazine cover on it, hey, I'm in the New Yorker this week. Part three. When the woman came into my office saying, did you see this? You're in the New Yorker. I said, I saw it. Thanks. She said, I got you a copy. I said, I'm a subscriber, but thank you. And she left. And I felt like a dick, but I had seen it, and I am a subscriber. Still, I felt like a dick. Part four. The woman sitting across from me on the train is reading New York Magazine. If she were reading The New Yorker, maybe she'd be impressed that she's sitting across from me. Not that I want to impress her. She is, after all, choosing to read New York Magazine instead of The New Yorker. Part five. My dear friend Julian suggested that by virtue of knowing me, a guy who is in The New Yorker this week, he can claim secondary bragging rights and dine eye on it for years to come. I would just like to point out that so far no one has taken me to dinner. Just saying. Part six. I realized that if I were to submit this to the New Yorker and they were to publish it, I would again be 
in the New Yorker, but I'm not going to submit this to the New Yorker. It's highly unlikely that they would publish it, and I don't deal with rejection all that well. Part seven. Next week I will no longer be in the New Yorker. I will look back fondly on this week when I was in the New Yorker. I will move forward and try not to live in the past when I was in the New Yorker. And if I ever have grandchildren, I will try not to bore them with stories of when I was in the New Yorker. Because it pleases you. Because it pleases you. I am very happy that you told me to shave my balls and then send you a picture. I like how smooth my balls are now. But even if I didn't like the sensation, I would still get an enormous amount of pleasure every time I accidentally touched them because it would remind me of how you told me to shave them and that it pleased you that I did it and sent you a picture of it. And even if you told me to do something perhaps I wouldn't like to do, like such as to take a serrated knife and make an incision in my cock and then send you a picture of that, I would still do it and I would still like it, not because of any occluded or overt desire to cut my cock, but rather because it gives me pleasure to do anything you tell me to do. And then later, if I were to accidentally touch the incision and it caused me pain, the pain, however acute, however severe, however painful it might be, would be entirely overshadowed by the f pleasure I would feel in remembering that you told me to cut my cock and that it pleased you to know that I did it and that I sent you a picture of it. And even if you were to tell me to say, cut off my right arm, I would happily do it and I would enjoy doing it, of course. But then, if you were to also tell me to cut off my left arm, I might be momentarily sad because how could I do that? I wouldn't be able to use my right arm as it would be lying severed and lifeless on on the floor, and I wouldn't be able to use my other leftover left arm to cut off my left arm. That would be logistically impossible. And I would know, and I would know that offering instead to cut off one or both of my legs instead would only displease you. So instead, I suppose I would have to find a lumber mill that had a circular saw or purchase such a saw myself, and then I'd have to turn it on and walk toward it and hope that somehow I managed to complete the task and sever, bo sever both my arms before passing out. But then, a Assuming I survived, I would be so full of pleasure, despite the agonizing pain, because I would know that I pleased you by doing as you had told me, although perhaps you would not know what I had done, because it might not be possible for me to send you a picture of it, as my <laughs> hands would be as severed from me and as lifeless and useless as my arms would be. I don't mean to make excuses. I am sure I could find a way to send you a picture in the event that I had successfully sawed off both of my arms after having received your instructions to do so, and once having done so, I would be in a sublime, transcendent state of ecstasy and joy. So please always be aware that it pleases me to do whatever you tell me to, because it pleases you. September 26th, I guess. Today, Daily Negations. Today I may spend a lot of the day not doing much of anything. I could feel bad about this, but not if I think about how badly things go when I when I do take action. Usually it is best to do nothing. September 27th. The world is full of infinite possibilities, but most of those possibilities are of terrible ways in which things can go wrong. If I want to avoid further sadness and dress and dread, I should try not to think about how full, how, how full of possibilities the world is. September 20, I'm just guessing about the dates, because this is a threat. It would be better if I had fewer options. If I had no choices, I wouldn't be burdened by the regret of having made the wrong choices. Today, I hope I have no choices to make at all. It's called, uh, uh, it's a good time to do a paler shade. As I stand here, Resenting the raucous rap music of the Q train performers for making it, making it impossible for me to read the essay about James Brown in the New York Review of Books, I realize I have taken whiteness to a whole new level. <laughs> Tits. Tits. I think it... I think, I kind of think it might be nice to have tits. Like, so then if I'm in bed with a woman, we could suck each other's tits. That sounds kind of nice. I think that would be hot. 
But it's a sip, slippery slope, I would think. Next, I might want long hair and makeup, and then I'd probably want most of my body hair removed, and then before you know it, I'd want a vagina, and I assume that would mean I wouldn't have a cock anymore, and that would mean that instead of fucking women in the vagina with my cock, I'd be getting fucked in my vagina with a strap on because I like women, and even if I had a vagina, I would still want to be fucked by women, not men, which maybe is close-minded of me, but there it is. So probably I shouldn't get tits, so probably I should stop eating so fucking much else. I'm gonna get tits. This is called the president. <laughs> the president. Fucking piece of shit. Scumbag, asshole, fucking retard. Scumbag, scumbag, you fucking piece of Little fucking piece of shit. Fuck you, you little fucking eat shit scumbag. Eat my shit, fuck wad, fuck face. Fuck you, you fuck. You fucking little scumbag. You suck ass, you fucking scum. You're a fucking scumbag. You're a condom. You're a fucking condom scumbag. Full of scum. You're a fucking bag. Full of fucking scum. You walk around full of the cum that you lick up off the street. You eat shit. You suck shit. You're a fucking piece of shit. Scumbag, I hate your fucking butt guts. And I want you to die painfully. And it's not even like I think you're going to be around much longer anyway. And it's not like I have to fucking watch you on the television because I don't fucking watch television when you're on the television. It's just that you're a fucking piece of shit. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. It's just that I fucking hate you, you fucking piece of shit. It's just that you're a fucking piece of shit. Fucking comb over. That's the only word I had. Cocksucker. Motherfucker. Fuck you. Fuck you, you piece of shit scumbag, motherfucking asshole scumbag, scumbag, piece of shit, little fucking asshole, retard, hard on prick fuck scumbag, shit face, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck everybody who puts up with it, including me, fuck me for not killing you, fuck anybody who's ever come within 15 fucking feet of you and hasn't fucking tried the fuck murder, fuck rotting in jail, fuck you and fuck and you don't even deserve to be executed. Just die a painful fucking death. You illiterate shit fuck scumbag. Scumbag. Motherfucking shit eating scumbag. Scumbag. You fucking fuck 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 you. Fucking piece of shit. Fucking scumbag. Piece of shit. Motherfucking scumbag. Scumbag. Piece of shit. Fuck 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 fuck. One more. <laughs> two, two minutes. More. Two, right, minutes. two minutes? Okay. Let's do this fast. It's called, it's called the miracle of childbirth. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The miracle of childbirth. Your father fucked your mother. At least once your mother and your father were in bed. And your father got a heart on and he stuck it inside your mother and they fucked. Sometimes maybe your father fucked your mother in the ass. Or maybe, and maybe on the night you were conceived, maybe they did that before or after. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe your father never fucked your mother's ass. But on the night that you were conceived, one thing is certain. Your father fucked your mother in her cunt. Maybe your mother sucked your father's dick first. Maybe your father ate your mother's pussy. Maybe your father sucked your mother's clit while sticking a finger or two up your mother's slit until she got really wet. Maybe he got his whole hand up there. If you have older brothers or sisters, then your father probably could have gotten his whole hand up there. If not, then maybe not. But at some point, your mother was wet and loose enough to accommodate your father and they fucked. Maybe they did it doggy style. Maybe your mother got on top of your father. Maybe your parents like to talk dirty to each other when they were Maybe your mother screamed, Oh, daddy, oh, daddy, fuck me, daddy. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck. And then maybe your daddy screamed, Here it comes, here it comes, get ready, bitch, here I come. And then maybe your mother said, Come in me, come in me. Oh, yeah, baby, fuck your mommy, fuck your mama, sweet pussy. Oh, yeah, daddy, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Or maybe they were very quiet, but at any rate, eventually your father came <laughs> and a sperm shot out of his dick and went up your mother and fertilized her egg, and that was you. That was you in your mother's womb, growing like a virus for nine months, making your mother fatter and fatter, making her sick, making her vomit, growing and sucking like a leech attached to her, sucking her blood till someday you want out and you burst through the snotty membrane, you pop out of your mother, all covered with blood, and a bloody umbilical cord still attaches you to the inside of your mother somewhere till someone sniffs it off and you are severed. You are a separate being. This is the miracle of childbirth. To some, it is proof that there is a God. Thank you.